Last time, I pedaled away from San Francisco to begin my five-month unicycle crossing of the USA. There it is. Oh yeah! yeah! This will be the final continent of my world unicycle tour, and having such an amazing send-off left me feeling extremely optimistic about the 4,000-mile journey that lay ahead. I'm riding on a one-man wheel powered with some fuel analog 36-inch unicycle across the USA. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna get myself into. into yeah. My name's Ed, and I'm riding a unicycle around the world. Join me on this series as I attempt to cycle 4,000 miles across the United States of America. It's really good to get back on the road. I love the freedom again. It's that stage of the ride where sort of aches and pains haven't really started yet. So you can just enjoy being on the road without really uh, having to deal with much pain. For instance, my crotch. It's feeling really good, but I know that within a few days it's going to start to sort of saddle sore up. But whatever, I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about now and just enjoying the road. I was following the Pacific coast down Highway 1. Not the quietest route choice, but certainly one of the prettiest. This beautiful coastline was not only a draw to me, but also to the hundreds of thousands of surfers who make their way down to these waves each year. That evening, while searching for somewhere quiet to throw my tent, I came across this group of surfer dudes who had already set up their camp just off the side of the road. We, we, we are out here with, with the boys, surfing, and this, and this beautiful fucker just <laughs> rolls up on one wheel <laughs> and says, hey, can we stay the night here? We said, you're damn right. You're damn right. <laughs> Only a Californian surfer dude could call you a fucker and it come across as endearing. Southwards, I kept on moving, because that day, I was gaining some company. Coming into Santa Cruz now, and do you remember Corbin? I, I met him and rode with him with a bunch of unicyclists a couple of weeks ago. So he's coming out today, and he's going to ride the rest of the day with me, obviously on his unicycle. Hey, welcome to Santa Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Passing Santa Cruz, we rode together along Seacliff State Beach, to the slightly bemused looks and double takes of the locals. Stopping for a break at a pier, it was here that I decided to unpack my new drone and take it up on its maiden flight. You ready? Yeah. It was while flying my spark along the pier, tracking Corbin on his unicycle, that I noticed an abandoned ship parked at the end of it. So there's a cement ship that they put out here years ago and they used to throw big cool parties on it. It was awesome, then it started falling apart. When I was a kid 20 years ago, we went and fished on it, but now it just washed out in the ocean. Yeah. So there's some little bits. I found out that the ship's name is the SS Paolo Alto and was sunk here deliberately in the 1930s for use as an amusement attraction. Now, however, deemed too dangerous, she's closed to the public and serves as a fancy sunbathing spot for sea lions. Ah. Didn't crash it, so that's, that's a win in my book. Corbin and I carried on pedalling south down Monterey Bay. Eventually we arrived at Moss Landing, easily recognisable by the power plant stacks. Because he owned a boat in the harbour, Corbin had invited me to stay there that night. Uh, Which one's you? This one or this one? We're this, this one right one. here. This is the Audrey. He told me that his mates were coming down the next day for a short sailing trip and that I was very welcome to join. An offer I certainly wasn't going to refuse. I just want to quickly interrupt this video and thank everyone that's currently supporting me on Patreon. Uh, if you didn't know, you can go over there and you can watch my videos a week early. Uh, and I want to say a particularly big thank you to Kintaro Sakino. Andrew Thomas, Kelly Jackson, Mark Paris, and Elijah Legenda. Um, you're supporting me on the third tier level, which means that I say your name in this little segment. So thank you very much. Woo! Optimistic. 
Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Quite a German. So there <laughs> has to be beer spelled with an Ed, I. How you doing? Scott, it's a, it's a yeah. pleasure to meet you. Sad. Welcome. I'm Stefan. Stefan, nice, yeah. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Bell rang who was in. She couldn't even answer. Don't say you're angry. I don't want forgiveness. Sister, take me down. While there wasn't much of an aim to our little jaunt, we did head out to one of the crab traps Corbin had set a few days before. Alright, got it. What's the depth meter say we're at? Like 307, yeah. yeah, yeah. That means I have to pull up 300 feet of rope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I see it. Ah. See all this dungeon S in there? Yeah, this looks like there's something in there. There's something. Boss or is it? Yeah. Yeah. Jellyfish and nothing. Nothing. Oh, oh. Oh. Man. But you got to work out. <laughs> <laughs> so we we'll spotted some whales and we're on a heading straight towards them. Corbin's got the uh, auto tiller out. They're pretty heavy though. They have a lot of mass to move. Yeah. And they're pretty streamlined too. That's true. We're hoping that we're, they're not going faster than we are. Just playing around with us. Yeah, we're on a good heading. Yeah. Right. Good job, crew. Oh, sister, take me down the road that never ends. Well, life's just TV and the stories don't make sense. Just keep going round and round again. Soon as you are able, soon as you are able. Back past the sea lions, it was time to put an end to the incredible day of sailing. Say goodbye to Scott, Stefan and Corbin, and get back on the road. Uh, good luck, and don't lose any teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to wait every week for the next episode? Head over to Vimeo and watch the entire four and a half hour series from San Fran to New York right now. You'll find the link in the description. Thank you. Now back to the episode. Okay, so as someone whose aim was to pedal to New York City, you may have noticed that I hadn't yet actually made all that much progress towards my goal. In fact, I was possibly even further away from the Big Apple now than I was four days ago in San Francisco. This trip for me has never been about speed, but rather trying to make the most of the opportunities that presented themselves on the road. Be that meeting up with other unicyclists, challenging myself to ride up steep streets, or bizarrely going whale watching off sailing boats. With that said, with close to 4,000 miles still left to cycle in the USA, I was conscious that I did need to stop getting distracted just a little bit and focus on cranking out the miles. Down along the dirt road in a hollowed out tree Drinking whiskey, sour, and butter gin. Watching the swallows dancing in the summer dust as the last light fades and stars all settle in. Well, I was dreaming I could fly, wishing they were true. But if I dream at all tonight, let it be a I can't keep up with you, man, up these hills. I know, right? I'm trying. You'll blast past. I'm trying. <laughs> Not only can he ride and make hills look easy, he could use a video on the <laughs> camera. Just south of Big Sur on Highway 1, I met Bernam out on his weekly ride. As I was shortly planning to leave the coast and cut inland towards Bakersfield, I asked his advice for the climb over the coastal range ahead. Well, you'll do fine. I mean, you're not going to be able to ride much of it. I don't <laughs> I know you said it's easier to push than pull. That's it, yeah. I think I'll be walking a lot. I think you'll be walking, but it's nice too. I mean, you'll have incredible coastal views. So lots of lots of things to see on the way. Fantastic. By the way, I remembered to tell you, and now I remember, I saw a tarantula coming across the road. Oh, wow. Last time I was up there, but that was like in November. Okay. So you never know what you'll see up there. It's pretty wild.
Nakimiento Ferguson was the name of the road I'll be following. 2,700 feet of climbing in just 10 miles. But before I started tackling it, I thought I should probably refill my water bottles. Chris, who owned the RV park at the bottom of the hill, kindly let me fill up. I think that's cool. I think you're crazy for as much riding as you've done on it. And with what I think were words of encouragement, it was time to start climbing. That's it there. Oh my god. Long before the weekend when you left for California, missing you was only hours away. This is where I say goodbye to the ocean, starting to head east, which is what I need to do because I need to get to New York. I can't keep going south, so heading east now and up and over the Sierras. I pedalled as high up the pass as I could until my heart felt like it was on the verge of exploding and then shifted down to my lowest gear, aka walking, and continued pushing to the top. And I'll tell you what, Bernam the cyclist was absolutely right. The coastal views were incredible. Let it be woo -woo -woo -woo! Just made it over the top of the pass, now heading down, I'm officially riding east. Riding my unicycle to New York, baby. So I reckon I'll, I'll probably find somewhere to camp reasonably soon. Uh, we've probably only got about, ooh, I don't know, 45 minutes of daylight left. Um, and I think in the next five miles or so, I'm gonna be entering a military zone, uh, which doesn't sound like it's a really big deal. It's not like there's a lot of security and fences and things like that, but I just feel like it's probably not best. Yeah, probably probably best not to not to camp inside it, but we'll see. A mile out from the military base, I noticed a rough path leading down from the road and into a patch of trees. Deciding that this was probably my best bet for a quiet campsite, I picked up my uni to save risking punctures and slowly made my way into the bush. It was at this point that a guy in a vehicle pulled up and shouted down in my direction. Doing okay? But to find out who this was, you'll have to tune in next time. If you're feeling impatient and can't wait for next week's video, you're in luck because the next episode is available right now on my Patreon. And if you're feeling really impatient, you can head over to Vimeo and watch the entire Ed Unicycles the USA series from start to finish over there. Your support is greatly appreciated. Well, this old thing ain't built for speed, but I love my trusty dusty speed. It'll get me around the world soon and I'll try for I know my route is roundabout, but I sure as hell don't have a doubt It'll get me where I'm going as long as the wind is blowing I'm well aware of dangers out there and it's not that I don't